It's one of the most famous flavors across the Americas and around the globe. The original red pepper sauce called Tabasco. Sean Calebs takes us back through Louisiana history to show us how the legendary McElhaney family sows its seeds and harvests the hot. <laughs> Think of New Orleans and you think food. It's going to be a new creation. Think of its food and you think spicy. And when it comes to hot sauce, this is arguably the gold standard. It's the hot sauce. It's the original hot sauce, but to me, it's a hot sauce that if you just use the original Tabasco, it doesn't take away the flavor of what you're trying to create. Scotty Craig's restaurant, Katie's, was voted the best neighborhood restaurant by three New Orleans publications. So you know his soft shell crab, covered with a rich crawfish sauce, will knock your socks off. And you guessed it, the key ingredient in the sauce, Tabasco. All different concoctions of Tabasco are in every nook and cranny in this restaurant. The customers love it, because they can play around with the different sauces and they can try different things. To get to the root of Tabasco, you have to come here, a two-hour ride west from New Orleans to a rich, fertile environment called Avery Island. In 1868, Edmund McElhaney started the company when he planted the first Tabasco peppers here. The story is that the seeds came up from Central America, and uh, they gave my great-great-grandfather a handful and said, here, put these on your food. They taste really good. He, he liked them. Then he took some of the seeds and grew them out. More than 150 years later, Tabasco remains a private company, still in the McElhaney family, and family members like Harold Took Osborne truly learn the business from the ground up. And you can see the difference. This is one that's ready to pick. Now, we won't start harvesting these for a while, but you can see the other, the colors, how they turn. They start out as a flower. They grow up and to become a green pepper, and then you can see it starting to change to an orange, and then they get red, and then they get Tabasco red. To this day, all the peppers for Tabasco are picked the same way Osborne's great-great-grandfather did in the 1800s. It's all hand harvested. We've been trying to develop a way to, to, to actually take it off the plant easier because you're looking at, at quite a bit of labor to actually pick the plant. But why mess with success? Today, Tabasco is an international powerhouse. Tabasco sauce is now sold in more than 160 countries around the world. And while 98% of the peppers are now grown in Central and South America, the genesis starts right here. All of the seeds for all the peppers grown all around the world come from right here in Avery Island, Louisiana. Colombia is one of our best markets. The, the Calca Valley is incredibly fertile, I mean, more so even than the Mississippi Delta. Really? And it's just incredibly, and it, we produce, we've produced more Tabasco out of there than anywhere else. The family learned the western slope of the Andes from Peru through Central America on into Mexico produces the richest yield and the proof. When you bite into one of these peppers, you know it. You know it. So it's off to what's called the mash warehouse for the ultimate test. So you just take, you don't need much. In fact, that you can take just about that much. You put it on your tongue. You want to feel where the burn is going to happen. Ooh, she bites. Thousands and thousands of gallons of mash from Peru, Guatemala, Zimbabwe, Colombia, pour into the warehouse every day. It flows into repurposed white oak barrels that used to hold bourbon. After, of course, the barrels are cleaned and sanitized, the barrel is then sealed with salt. And the last ingredient is patience. Once we put them in here, we really don't do anything. They have to age for three seasons at least. If we start playing with them, we'll mess them up. But if you just leave them alone, they do exactly what they're supposed to do. Once again, it must age for three years. Not a lot of machinery in the warehouse. About all you need is a hammer. And no one wields one better than Hamilton Polk. He's worked here 40 years. This batch is from Honduras. And what I'm looking for is the aroma the smell, see that's three year old. And then that's the real thing, isn't it? That's the real Tabasco. Then I, I'm tasting it for taste. That's good, that's real good. At any given time, there are 50,000 barrels here. 123 barrels from Colombia, 119 from Guatemala, and 115 from Peru. From here, high tech takes over. 
First, a collection of stainless steel and tubing separates all the pepper skins and seeds from the good stuff. I wish I knew the recipe, but I don't. All I can say is there is a healthy dose of vinegar and salt wafting through the air that leaves us choking and hacking as we pour out of the mixing room. Finally, it's bottled. Peppers are grown in South and Central America, shipped to Louisiana for processing, and then back out all over the globe. Japan is the single largest market after the U.S. driven by Southern California. They even have a special seal to sell to the Queen of England. It's got the, the royal warrant on it, which is a new thing for us. We're happy and proud to have received it. it. It's just a mark of quality for a product to be sold to the Queen. In many ways, Edmund McElhaney made Tabasco an international company from the beginning by selling the sauce to the British Army. As Great Britain's empire grew and flourished, so did Tabasco. After Edmund passed away, John Avery McElhaney ran the company, but he resigned to join Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. Fresh from an Arctic expedition, Edward Avery McElhaney ran the company from 1889 until 1949. Without question, a rich and colorful past, but it would all just be a footnote in history if Tabasco wasn't the real thing. This is when it gets real fun. That's Tabasco mayonnaise. Food is sort of the thing that gets us all, we all have it in common. And that's the wonderful thing about our red sauce. It's not an overpowering flavor. It's not an, over, it, it takes what's already there and enhances it. So when enjoying that pasta, pizza, oysters, or anything else, be glad a southern United States banker took a gamble with some seeds from Central America all those years ago. And be glad his descendants had the sense to know not to mess with a good thing. Our thanks to Sean Calebs for his report.